Hello, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Uh, welcome back to all my subscribers and welcome to my new ones. Uh, I'm here today with a variation on something I've done before. If you remember the green file folder journal that I did from one file folder, well, I've just adapted it slightly so that I can make it from A4 cardstock. And I'm using a gorgeous kit from Lorna at TaylorMade Journals. So, yeah, basically it's a little folio. We've got a string button closure, gorgeous kit paper on the front. We've got a pocket here that I'll be filling with some sort of ephemera. Uh, there's a little removable notebook here. I've not decorated that page because it's covered by the notebook. And I love this blue cardstock. So yeah, that has 15 pages. The front page is a kit page. It's designed to be a journal page and I've just cut it down so that we've got part of it with the lines on. And then the other 14 pages are just one of the backing papers from the kit. It's lovely, it's very difficult to see. It's a very pale snowflake. I printed it in draft quality to get it even plainer than it would normally look. So you can still write on it and see what you've written. So I think that's absolutely gorgeous, that paper. I'm really impressed with this kit. Pop that back in. And then on the back, we have another pocket there. In the green one I made, I had two tags there, which I'm gonna make some tags. I'm gonna use some of the elements from the kit. So I'm just, for this one, I'm just going to show you how I made this base from a couple of pieces of A4 cardstock rather than the file folder because this is not one continuous piece. There's, there's a couple of differences. This flap here is folded over rather than being a separate piece. And you can't, you, you'll not be able to see it on camera, but this part is double. That is where the two pieces of cardstock actually join. So I'll crack on and show you how I did that. Right. Yeah, I've got three different ones in various stages of completedness. <laughs> so I'll probably switch from one to the other throughout this. Right. First things first, I'm going to need my scoreboard. I know I have showed you and plenty of other people I've done videos on how to score if you don't have a scoreboard. It's, it's pretty simple. You can even use the end of a pen. All right, what am I scoring with today? I did have my pokey tool, pokey tool, scoring tool out. Can we, yeah, we've just got that scoreboard on. Right, I'm gonna use, I've got quite a lot of cardstock in various colors, but I don't have a lot of each color. And these colors have, pick from my stash I just go perfectly with that kit and I've made, I think I'm going to make it in the same colour as the one I showed you it's I don't even know what it's called I can't tell you where to get it from I have literally had this card over 15 years back in the day if you're in the UK if you remember a shop called paper mill shop yeah you just used to go in and you could pick there were hundreds of different types of card on shelves and you could have whatever you wanted and you just bought it by the box a set price for a box so that's why i've got so many different types right i'll get my two pieces of the blue out that we're going to use right oh i've got three can't count can't count woman so the first piece i'm going to need to score right we're going to make the inside flap and that inside flap measures two and a quarter inches so my first score line is at two and a quarter now i've got all fancy and i can actually put text up during video i'll put these on the screen so you should be seeing them now score at two and a quarter to make it is it is quite thick card this i'd say 250 to well about 250 gsm i'm guessing I don't know what that is in pounds for you American ladies. Uh, yes, I do have a conversion chart somewhere. If I can find that, I will put that on the screen as well. 
Ooh. <laughs> so yeah, first score mark, two and a quarter inches. Uh, second score mark, we're now making the inside front, the, we're making the front cover, which is four and three quarter inches wide. So we need to score again at, so I'm adding this up as a go, I think is it seven. So that's three quarters, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we score at seven. that is all we do on that piece for now because we are then going to cut that off and i'm going to cut that leaving a quarter inch for our gusset gusset yeah spine so the way i'm going to do this for cutting is i'm going to measure how long the card is from the crease and it should be seven just to check I've got everything right. So I'm going to move the card across to seven and a quarter and I'm going to cut. Yeah, so we're left with a piece of card seven and a quarter inches wide. We've got a two and a quarter inch flap and a four and three quarter inch front piece. So that flap will then fold over. Just bring my book back in to show you exactly what I mean. So this is that piece. Are we in frame? Yeah. That is that piece, yeah. And just to remind me that that's that piece, I'm going to grab my punch now and cut that out. I just eyeball it roughly in the middle. There we go. So we have now made this part we're now going to make the back and the fold over flap out of a separate piece of a4 card <clears throat> so we'll grab that other piece come here I can't, I can't pick it up this card's not behaving for me today is it so i'm going to put this on and first i am going to score to make i'll turn this and show you how I'm going to score to make this front flap and that is two inches wide so my first score mark will be at two inches at the right end so we'll score at two then we need to make that spine piece which is a quarter of an inch so I will score again at two and a quarter inches Then, I, you know, I should have just took that out and to stop it flip flapping about. Yep. Then we're going to make the back piece, which is five and a half. So I'm cheating here to remember where to score. So we're going to score at seven and three quarters. Again, these should all be on the screen for you now. So we score at seven and three quarters. And then we're going to cut this piece of card off here. Yep. These pieces we're cutting off, keep them because we're going to be using those to make pockets. I don't like to waste. So the piece we need now is seven and three quarter inches wide. And we need to cut a quarter an inch off to make the spine. So we're going to cut this piece at eight inches wide. So I hope you followed that. <clears throat> It'll perhaps become more clear now. And I want to join these two pieces together. So I'll move the scoreboard out of the way. When I was drinking my tea, I've got. Try and keep my frogs away. Yeah, it's amazing how dry your throat gets doing this. Right, so we're making the cover from these two pieces. Uh, you can probably see now how they're going to go. Right, before I fold these two though, I want to glue these two together. <coughs> Excuse me, go away. Not you, not, not you people watching that naughty frog. Now, I have made a couple of them. Oh, put that right way, my sis. Yeah, you'll have heard people talk about peaks and valleys when you score things. The peak, you can feel raised up. It's a raised up bump. The valley is, yeah, they're dent. Now I like to have the inside of the cover 
where the peaks are and the outside of the cover where the valleys are right i need to glue that piece to that piece and i'm going to glue the right hand piece onto the left hand piece so that any join is towards the back of the cover now i've used i used three in one on one i used just to test it out <laughs> so i used three in one glue on one of the ones i've already made i used cosmic shimmer on another and i used my favorite kalal on another yeah and because i've been extremely naughty i have not put the pin in my kalal <laughs> it then volcanoed and it did at least seal the top so it's not evaporating so i think i'm going to use my cosmic shimmer today i've decanted it into this little bottle with a metal tip and i've got my stainless steel pin in it so here we go i'm going to put the glue on the first piece of card we cut along the right hand side there and then I'm going to take the other piece turn it over and I'm going to put a line of glue there so the lines of can you see how easy this comes out with this little applicator bottle and then I turn it back so the two pieces that are glued are going to come together I'm going to place this with this edge just before the crease line yeah I'm just gonna grab a ruler should have been a bit more organized with that where's my big center ruler gone tell me I haven't lost it again I may have lost it no here it is I've already been using it see so it's out and I'm just gonna put that at the top just so I know this is going to be straight yeah and then I'm going to press it down so I hope you can see what I've done there so this now looks like one continuous piece although we know it isn't but the join is on that spine so you you hardly see it once this is inked well you don't see it I'll, I'll bring in one of the made ones again it is that you can't you just can't see that that's joined yeah it does it really nicely now while that is setting i will come in and fold this side over and then i'm going to cut a pocket now when i've got two to fold over close together i like to use my ruler so I will do the inner one first place your ruler along the crease and fold up to it just gonna go over that with my bone folder get a nice crisp crease then I'm gonna place the ruler over the crease up to that line again I did this with my green file folder I'm not going to do this as detailed as the green file folder I'm basically just want to concentrate on the differences because it's not that long since I did it I, I just love the clean crisp lines of this little folio and I thought it'd be nice to do a winter themed one so that will be our fold over flap next thing we need to do is round a couple of corners while that's still setting before we go folding so I'll round the corners I'm using my broken we are we are memory keepers do you know it actually is easy to use broken i just can only use the small corner but i rarely use the big corner anyway right i will now turn it round and i'm going around the corners of the side where i've got the flap that we are going to stick down but we're not going to stick that until we've put our design papers on but i do want to cut my corners there we go i think that glue has had long enough to set now so i'm going to come in and fold up to that crease we've got a little 
I'd not quite cut that perfectly with my trimmer. My trimmer has been a workhorse, I've had it years, but there's now a couple of little points on it where it leaves a slightly raggedy edge. I'm not going to get rid of it, I'm going to use that. I want all the edge to be raggedy <laughs> so I can make some grungy journals. If I'm cutting the paper ragged, I don't have to come in with my paper distress tool, do I? Right, that's, that's all set lovely now. So again, put the bone folder on that crease. So there we have, turn it the way around we want it. There we have our outer cover. Yeah, and it is as simple as that. I just find whenever <clears throat> you make anything where you need to join two pieces of card, I always like to join it near a crease. Because you just don't see it, it doesn't show up too much. Right. I'm now going to use some of this card to make the pocket. I can't remember which depth I used. I think it was the not quite so for some reason I've ended it with different depth pockets. I don't know. It don't matter. I'm gonna use that one. As long as you get the width of the pocket right, it'll be right. I'm gonna use me <clears throat> excuse me again. Much easier to handle little trimmer now. So <coughs> the inside of this is five and a half inches. So I want to cut the width of this pocket slightly less than that. Otherwise it will butt up to the creases and it won't close properly. So I'm just going to come in a sixteenth of an inch and cut. I'm then going to use my two inch circle punch again to punch this thumb notch out. You can draw around something and cut this yourself or you don't even need to put a thumb notch in. It's not essential. And I will then cut that. Now I'm not going to make you watch me ink the whole journal cover, but I'm going to show the inking of this. And this is the ink I'm using. Again, the colour I found about out about from the fabulous Tanya at Tatty Treasure. It's Memento ink and it's London Fog. I'm really loving this. I used it on that shaker tag and it goes so well with navy blue. I think Tanya had bought it for some navy blue envelopes she worked with. I love the colour of those envelopes and it got me thinking I am sure I have some card a similar colour and I dug it out. I don't tend to use a lot of coloured cards since I started junk journaling so that's like got stuck Stashed to the back of my giant storage wardrobe, <laughs> as I call it. So yeah, that's that and that. Can I? Yeah, I can. I can go ahead and stick this in because I'm not putting design papers on there. So I'm going to use my cosmic shimmer again. We want to line all the way around the edge. This is so similar to art glitter. I used to say that it was slower drying, but since I've put it in this bottle and I'm using it with the fine tip, I really can't tell any difference between this and art glitter. I think sometimes the glue will wrinkle your paper or card if you get too much on. And if you're using a fine bead, it doesn't wrinkle. I mean, sometimes I get away with just using regular tacky glue. I use a lot of the Hobbycraft one. And I also find the thinner a card or paper is, the most, the more prone it is to wrinkling. There's probably some really scientific reason for that. I'm completely unaware of. <laughs> so that's the inner pocket. All right. So there we go. I'm going to bring the other one back in now. Quick change is one I prepared earlier. So as you can see, the only difference here is I've gone ahead and put my design papers on. I put the front design papers on, then I make the holes for the string button closure. And then 
I put the inside design paper on and then I'll glue down this flap. So I'm going to pause now, cut some papers to fit this one and I'll be back with you. Right, I'm back. Uh, I've been cutting and measuring and inking. So I've chosen my papers that I'm going to use on this one. It's going to be all about the birds, this one. So I have cut a piece. I've got the old one in just for contra comparison. I've cut my front piece there, which is eight inches high and four and a half inches wide. I've cut the piece for there and you can see it's got that lovely little birdie on and got a lovely little sparrow there on that piece. That is eight inches high and one and three quarter inches wide. I've cut my piece for the back and I'll show you what I'm doing with that after we've done these. And yeah, I've got a choice of two inside pieces here. I didn't think this were going to be wide enough, but it is. It's just wide enough. So I've got the owl. Oh, I've got that. Is it a bullfinch? I, I don't know which one to put in. I could use either. I think I might go with the owl though. I'm going to go with the owl. I am. Yeah, she says. So sorry, bullfinch. You can go on the next one. So, I'm going to glue those on. Well, I'm not going to glue that one on. I'm going to glue the front ones on and then we're going to punch the holes. Again, if you've watched my botanical video, you will know this. You'll have seen it where I made the green botanical folder. So, you're just getting edited highlights really with this one. So, I'm back to using my... Do you know, I haven't got enough in there. You know what? I'm going to show you the glue that I use and how I use it and how I fill it up, she says. Oh, it's this. It's the Kalal. That's what the bottle looks like. Yeah. Don't spill it on your project, woman. Just don't, because that wouldn't be good, would it? And I just decant from this big bottle that is really hard to control the flow on into this icing bottle. And it fits in perfectly, so... Look, there really is no mess. Just be careful tipping it up. Close that up for my next decantation. <laughs> decantation, is that even a word? It is now. There you, see, there you go, I'm ready to go. Fill my bottle. How easy was that? Right, let's get my glue on. So I'm putting my line all around the edge. This is my new replacement for three in one, unless I need something that's less runny. Around the edge again. Because, you know, sometimes with this icing bottle you can get your line too thin. But I'd rather have that, wouldn't you, than too much. It's easier to put more on than take some off. Make sure we've got that the right way up. Oh! <laughs> oh! That is so... I am so glad that didn't land like a piece of toast butter side down. Oh, that would have been a major, major disaster. Oh, my word. I just let it drop gently. We've then got our wiggle room just to line it up perfectly. Oh. Yes, uh, Fiona at Miss Paint a lot is a new Kalal convert. But yeah, I do agree with some of the people in Miss Paint a Lot's group. It is runny. I, I really can't control it for what I want to use it for out of the bottle it comes in. So I do decant into a smaller bottle. I do a lot of that. I think sometimes we think we don't like a glue and it's not the glue. It's 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 a delivery system change the delivery system and it just changes the properties of the glue it just yeah right that's our front cover i will now put this do you know what i'm going to move that out of the way while i glue it then if i have another toaster drop incident 
there's no danger it's going to fall on my project is there so we're going all around edge again yeah i wasn't using this icing bottle and i had the smaller bottle of kalal which i thought were quite good and it was manageable until i got the bigger bottle that was not manageable so i got this little icing bottle and it's so much better than the original small kalal bottle it really is right this is going on the flap so again don't have to be too i've not got a steady hand so i need wiggly glue glue with wiggle time i really do it's a lifesaver for me a lifesaver i'm being a bit dramatic there aren't i okay it makes my life easier it's an easy lifesaver it saves my easy life from becoming difficult yeah that's straight enough press that down and there we have it our front two pockets on I haven't gone ahead and inked the folder yet but you can do that after it's not a problem I did ink my papers with my London fog and again that's the cover for another one so the next job is to make our string and button closures now <clears throat> I appreciate I'm gonna have people watching this who will be able to follow this no problem from what I've done so far and don't want to go back and watch my old videos if they need a little bit more help so I'm just gonna crack on and do my string and button closures I need to get my circle pun which I I have a box under my desk now that I put all my popular punches in so I'm not going fishing in three separate punch drawers so I'm going to cut four circles of card and I'll do this while the glue sets on my on that one move that one out of the way because I make these quite often I've developed a little system on what I do when because it allows glue to dry <laughs> on one thing while I'm preparing the next right I do prefer the method of cutting the big circle marking it and then cutting the little hole lately I just can't manage to do it the other way around don't know I don't know if it's the light I'm working in or what so I just need to grab a pen oh, I don't need to use a fabric pen do I I did have a pencil but no idea where that is and I'm just going to mark the circle the center the center ish and I'm gonna grab my handheld crocodile for this and I'm lucky enough to have them both I was one of the people who bought the small one first and then thought hmm really wish I bought the big one it's very hard to see my pen on this dark blue card mm, yeah that's near enough middle for my for me so yeah and then I managed to get the big one on a fabulous deal at Create and Craft a few years back. So they're going to be our button closures. Now sometimes I would automatically put that halfway down but I just want to make sure I miss that little birdie. So rather than measuring it this time I am going to mark it, punch the hole and then mark the next one at the right distance so that's where i want my hole because i want to see that little birdie it just looks like he's sitting on button now i think that's pretty cute so let's glue these together i'm using cosmic shimmer for this i'm doing it again and i've not been putting my pins in i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm apologizing to glue now i'm terrible Shouldn't I should title some of these videos how not to craft. Yeah, I tend to find, you know, if your hole is slightly off centre when you punch it, once you put two together, it sort of centres the hole, if that makes any sense. 
yeah you can see my holes don't line up so what I'm left with in the middle is sort of the centre which is big enough to get my brad through right. I just found one <clears throat> one thickness of card is not quite sturdy enough. Bring that tea in. Chase away the frog. It's strange. You get a dry throat and then you feel the need to clear your throat, but there's nothing to clear. Oh, that's much better. So that's our buttons. I will now just ink around the edge of these because it'll be very difficult to ink these after putting them on. It's still doable. But it's not something we want to have to do, is it? Right. And I'm using silver brads on this. They go really nice. So yeah, I've got my box out and I'm using something other than gold. A couple of silver ones. Now I'm going to get the big crocodile out to chomp my holes. That glue should be pretty much set now. I'm using the big 3 sixteenths hole and I'm just going to, I'm just looking where the hole comes to. Oops. Do you know what? It is actually dead in the, that could not be any more in the centre if it tried. That's just so lucky. Because I've already got this set to 4 and one eighth, which is half the length. I now need to punch a hole in that one. So I'm going to measure, I'm going to eyeball this for the distance. We're going to want it around about there. So I'm going to use this and draw a little circle. And I'm going to come in and punch from the top. We now it wants to be exactly four and one eighth of an inch down and the distance across we've just worked out by eyeballing it. So that's that. Ooh, one thing we need to do now. I've put little circles behind these holes just to strengthen the card. There's less chance then of the brad pulling through. Do you know I'm going to try this the, the other way around. So I'm mentioning I'm, I'm cutting my holes and this way around because I don't like the other way around anymore. And you're some of you are thinking, what on earth is Shan about? Right, did you see I cut those holes out for my button closures and then I punched a hole in the centre afterwards? Well, the other way to do it is this. You punch the small hole first and then you come in with your circle punch, place it around the hole and punch again. But I have just been really rubbish lately at getting it straight this way. I don't know what it is. I have... This small circle punch is quite, it's got quite a deep recess. And I think, I don't know what's shadow and what's the edge of the punch. Well, actually, I've not done that one too bad. Yeah, see, it's not perfectly in the middle. It should be, but it's not. Well, it's not a big thing. I'll do, I'll put the good one there. And I'll put the not so good one there. Oh, can you see I've changed blue card? But well, don't matter. All these colours of blue card match this paper collection really well. So I'm just putting a little bit of cosmic shimmer on and I'm putting a little circle of card there at the back of that hole. So when my eyelet comes through and fastens, it's got more to grip onto. It's less likely to rip the card and come off in the future. I'll put that one there so we're going to see this one but I think it looks I quite like the look of it do you know I like it in the contrasting card better than when I use the matching card I say contrast it's not a contrast it's a slightly different shade isn't it right so there we go so let's gri grab my big buttons that I've inked yes grab my eyelets 
Right, need a little push. You know, because I didn't get my holes right in the centre. That's it. It's through now. Can you see? It might not be perfect, but yeah, what is? I know I'm not. There we go, that one went an even easier. I'm going to bring the big crocodile back in now. I'm going to fasten these buttons on. Yeah. I just I just love how that little bird looks like he's sitting on this button. Cute little birdie. Ooh, ooh. <clears throat> I'm, I'm here again. I forgot some of it. I forgot some of it. I'm rushing. I'm talking. I don't know what's occurring. I forgot one important little step. Right, so that we can put our string around these buttons, I'm just going to add another little piece of card to the buttons just to give us a little bit more room to get our string to fit. And I'm using an even smaller circle punch to punch a teeny, can you even see that? A teeny tiny little circle I'll show you where that's going to go it's going to go on the back of this button you don't see it you don't want to get too much glue where you don't where it doesn't belong though or it will be very difficult to get your string behind if you've glued your button to your page so yeah just a little circle of card there just to raise it up a fraction some people use um flattened eyelets for this but because i'm using quite a fine string to close this i don't want it raised up too much or i'll get a situation where it won't stay closed if i was using a chunkier string yes I may use, you get one of those eyelets, squash it with a hammer or squash it with your machine and pop that between the button and the page. Right, that's better. Right, let's pretend we didn't forget that now. I'm just leaving it as a surprise. Yeah, of course I were. Come on little birdie, we've got your button back for you to sit on. And now we're going to fasten you. Yeah. yeah I tend to find I need two hands with this. So that's that one done. Then let's do this one. Oh I thought I'd drop my Brad then. Go on little Brad. Does anyone else do that talk to inanimate objects? I wonder if it's a sign of insanity. Could be. If it is, I've been insane for most of my life. Move little glue pot. And that's that one. I like these brads, especially with that card behind, they're nice and smooth. If they're not smooth, I'd come in with a little craft hammer and flatten them out. So there we have our cover with our buttons on. I will now put this piece of paper on before gluing that flap down. And by leaving that until after we put that on, you won't see that. So, get the collal out again. And there we go. Yeah, I love this kit. So many gorgeous birds in it. And I'm not going to... I don't think this folio design needs a lot of fanciness on it. Fanciness? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to come in with glitter and things like that. 
fancy doing a full journal with this paper and going to town with glitter and bling but I don't think it belongs on this folio these will be available in my Etsy shop if anyone buys them and wants to bling them I'd love to see it or if you're interested in one before they go in the shop just message me right looking good I'm going to use my new no, I'm not going to glue it yet I need to do a bit of inking I need to ink this edge if I don't ink this edge it'll be much more difficult to ink it after gluing it down the outer perimeter of the folio we can ink after the papers are on but this glued down edge we need to do now so I'm going to come in with a little line got a blob on the end little line of the cosmic shimmer on each side I'm going to fold that over and press it down so there you have it it's just it's just a different variation on that same folio that I made one of them I've made is going to end up being a little mini journal notebook because the first one I did I made a mistake and I accidentally made the spine half an inch wide funny that because I've been watching Fiona uh, Miss Paint a lot saying that she'd made a journal with the half inch spine and then decided it was better with the quarter inch and then I did the exact same thing but I did it accidentally what's that all about I must have had that half inch in my mind right so i've held that down long enough so there we Sorry, have that i don't know that mm, she's not chimed in for a while has she i'll just ignore her and i'm using this the same wax linen thread yeah go for it It's actually it's not a linen this it's just a waxed thread for my closure tie it tie it again yeah where's my little scissors snip it off and then I just go round two or three times Sometimes I go in a figure of eight. Sometimes I just do it like this. It really depends how I'm feeling. Oops, messed that up, didn't you, missus? <laughs> Very much luck with this. It's only because I'm trying to keep it flat. I've, I would normally have lifted this up to do it. That's better. And I'll just cut it off there. So, there we have half a folio right i'm gonna leave it there for today and i'll come back and show you how i put the back cover on with the pocket and we'll make some ephemera to go in so it'll just be a decorating next time so i hope you enjoyed that uh if you've done the green one before you, you'll you'll have followed that quite easily if you are a beginner and you at some point you thought what is shan about what what on earth is happening here I will link to the tutorial I did on this folio in green made from a file folder. And I will put all the measurements up on the screen. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. It really does help me out. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.